One of our observations has been that when we alter the space from the uncoupled state to the coupled state, what we observe is the, an increased coherence in the data streams that our instruments are gathering. And that means that we will be able to create and combine electrical and magnetic devices that will be much more coherent and thus produce new industries. One of those I foresee happening is the generation of room temperature superconductivity with all its imagined benefits. Now to give you some idea of the scale of difference that occurs between the uncoupled state of physical reality and the coupled state of physical reality, let's look at this next figure. This chart indicates what we might expect to see when we convert a laboratory from the uncoupled state of physical reality to the coupled state of physical reality. Here I've plotted the pH of a vessel of water in the vertical direction versus time in the horizontal direction. And the experiment being carried out is to place a ceramic, simple disc-shaped ceramic magnet under this vessel of water with obviously one pole pointing upwards and measure for the next three to five days. And then just turn it over so the opposite pole faces the water and measure for another three to five days. And what we see is the result given here. We see that when the south pole is facing the water, the pH goes up, it becomes more alkaline. When the north pole faces the water, then the pH goes down, it becomes more acidic. And after about three days, the difference between these two states is about 0 0.6 pH units. And that is very large effect, since our measurement accuracy is 1 one hundredth of a pH unit. Now, if we, de if we did the same experiment in an uncoupled space, we would see nothing of this nature. And that is because in the uncoupled state of physical reality, all we have are magnetic dipoles. And with magnetic dipoles, the magnetic energy storage and the magnetic force are both proportional to the square of the magnetic field. So we could never get this kind of effect I'm showing you now. It violates the physics of the traditional level of physical reality, the uncoupled level. So you can perhaps begin to imagine the application of this kind of phenomenon in industry. Turning to education and business, again, this coherence phenomenon is important because in the coupled state, humans, young or old, will have a greater intention span. They will have greater memory capacity and they will be more creative. This will make them more thoughtful. It will allow them to have better attitudes. It will allow them to cooperate more readily with others and will allow them to be more inventive in that state of cooperation. All of this a great benefit to education and business. Well, this has just been a brief review of what one might expect when there is large-scale use of these intention host devices in our world. Now, at least a few of you will be a little skeptical about these remarks. So to perhaps change your attitude about this, I would like to share with you some of the experimental data upon which I have based these remarks. The first phase of our experimental work was to design 
four uniquely different target experiments, which we set up in separate rooms of a large laboratory space. And we then imprinted four of these intention host devices, each with a specific intention for the particular target experiment. And then we shipped one at a time the intention host device to the laboratory where the experiments were to be run, were being run actually, gathering background data on the uncoupled state of physical reality. That is the normal measurement values that everyone sees. And then we would put the particular intention host device into a power source in the room and place the device within two or three feet of the particular target experiment and just switch it on and track the data stream over time to see how it changed. The first target experiment was to take the pH of highly purified water and try to increase it by one full pH unit. That was our intention. There was no chemical additions to the water. Our measurement accuracy was one one hundredth of a pH unit. So we were asking for a result that was a hundred times the noise. That's a big factor. In fact, it's a reduction in hydrogen ion concentration by a factor of 10. And this figure shows a typical result for that experiment. Here we see that when we put the pH electrode into the vessel of water, we have a certain starting pH. And then over a very short time, the pH of the water drops to the thermodynamic equilibrium value for the uncoupled state, as determined by the carbon dioxide concentration in the air, by the purity of the water, and by the room temperature. And then after the short buffering period, we see a slow climb of the pH in basically an exponential fashion over the next five or six days. And in this result, it plateaus at about 1.01 .01 pH units for the coupled state of physical reality compared to the uncoupled state equilibrium value shown in the figure. We were overjoyed at this result. And it's a very robust and very successful result.